Hello again, and welcome back to Illegally Cited. This is Jesse here, aka BGFH, and I am back for another Access Unlocked video. And this time we're actually going to be talking about something that I've been mentioning on the channel for quite a while, uh, many times now, and I've actually even brought it up in the Game Accessibility Conference or GA Conf presentation or panel that I was on last year at uh, the conference in California. And that is in-game accessibility. So up to this point, and more specifically text-to-speech especially, text-to-speech slash screen reader support in-game. And I've covered on the channel games that have had some degree of text-to-speech, but in a lot of cases it's largely been top-level menus. Um, some games have had, a couple games have had full narration, a couple great examples of that are Sequence Storm, uh, Eagle Island, Skullgirls, the PC version any, anyway. And those are a couple that have just really, really solid text-to-speech support. You know, Eagle Island has all of its menus and dialogue and inventory, like all of everything, the store that you run across, all of that text and menu items are narrated. Sequence Storm from start to finish is totally narrated, even to the point where during the story mode, it actually adds a little bit of description for the cutscenes, almost like an audio described cutscene. It's actually pretty incredible. Skullgirls was the first game that I pretty much encountered that was, it was a mainstream game that had added full text-to-speech to support via the screen reader. So you, I could be running JAWS, I could be running NVDA on, on the PC version. And from the time I opened that game, to, from the time I launched it, to the time I closed it, everything spoke. And that just blew me away. But there's also been a lot of other titles that have had text-to-speech but like I said, they've been just in the main level menus, maybe a few option screens speak. But once you get into actual gameplay, a lot of that text-to-speech accessibility goes away. So <laughs> you can kind of start a new game, <clears throat> but you can't actually play the game as a blind user. And like I said, as great as Eagle Island is, as far as full text-to-speech for menus and narration, um you know, even for like the store and everything, that is a game that because of its procedurally generated layouts, um, that the game itself, once you get in, is not fully playable um, just because of inherently the way that it's set up. That might change if he adds a different mode in the future, which uh, the developer is contemplating. So, Shout out to Pixel Nix uh, for even even the work that he's done on that, and shout out to everyone you know, Special Magic Games, um, and oh, I'm so sorry, I forgot the name of the pub, the developer for Skullgirls, but those are a couple of examples. But like I said, one of the things that I've kind of long since said is I wish that games had more user interface text-to-speech support. And we're going to look at a game that just recently came to my attention, the definitive edition of Age of Empires 2. And I'm going to launch this thing right now. This is a PC game. You can currently get it in the Microsoft Store. If you are a Game Pass for PC or Game Pass Ultimate member, you can actually download this. You can uh, install it for free. Um, so I have a Game Pass Ultimate uh, Pass, and so I can you know download games on my Xbox One or Windows when they're available. And yeah, here we go. So it's so funny to see on um, the. Uh, just forgot what I was going to say. I apologize. <laughs> but we're going to skip this intro. And so what I want to show you guys today is 
the text-to-speech support that I've been really, really hoping for in some AAA game. And like I said, it's not perfect. There are a few issues that I will uh, point out and some suggestions for fixing these. But honestly, this is a great example, great example of what I've kind of been hoping for. Not just in like a strategy game, but just any game. Could be an action game, an open world game, driving game, whatever. Um, Age of Empires 2 is uh, the original, came out in, I want to say the late 90s, early 2000s. It is a real-time strategy game where you're going through all, the, all of these different, uh, in single player anyway, you're going through all these different kind of scenarios and historical battles between these different empires and things like that. And it was huge for multiplayer. Uh, you could play multiplayer skirmishes against other players. You know, you were kind of the whole thing of building up your base and, you know, turning out your soldier and your units and fighting other players, that kind of a thing. And a couple of my friends in college were really, really into this game. And I just, I tried it for a little bit, but these games inherently are difficult for me because there's so much going on via like the there's so many little, little small like soldier units or villagers or these little tool tips bunch of you know like oh you gotta click this thing to click that thing and there's little buttons and user interface items everywhere and it's just it's so there's there's so much information going on at once and it's so small a lot of the time that these games, even turn-based games, I just never got into because it was so text-heavy. And one of the things that I've often said, even in my GAConf panel, was that, you know, if, even for low-vision users, you know, think about text-to-speech support not just being for a totally blind user to access something. As a low-vision user, it's very, very helpful because, um, you know, I want to spend the vision that I do have, you know, let's say somebody is light sensitive or experiences eye fatigue. We want to use our vision to actually play the game, you know? So if we can offset some of that, if we can kind of give our eyes a rest when we go into, let's say the menu systems, the options screen, uh, your skill trees, your map screen, weapon upgrades, uh, any of these just user interface items that you have in most games now, like action games are, or shooters are not even just action or shooter games anymore. I mean, look at Doom Eternal. Um, yeah, you shoot dudes a lot, but how, how many upgrade systems are there? I mean, you've got weapon upgrades, perks, and mods, and suit upgrades, and there's probably a half a dozen different uh, upgrade screens. You know, you take something like Borderlands where you're constantly sh swapping in and out different guns and mods and all kinds of things. So, you know, open world games, racing games, just any number of things. Like everything is going open world and RPG and you don't just have RPG or racing or fighting. You know, there, there's so many things that are just blended together. And everything is gaining in complexity. So adding text to speech can also really, really help legally blind and low vision users. Now, I'm gonna show you the menu system and what I really came here for, the in-game text to speech support, which is pretty great by the way. But before I do, I wanna do I want to mention that you in order for this to work. It's not using a screen reader per se. It's actually using like Windows native text to speech support. And in order to make this work, you have to go under the Xbox settings and your Windows 10 settings. And you go into your Xbox uh, app and you tell it under the settings and there's an accessibility area. There's an option that says have games read to me. And once you have that enabled, um, I found that you have to do this within the Xbox app and there may also be a Windows area. It could be a little bit cleaner um, because I had a little bit of trouble when I was trying Gears of War earlier this year. I couldn't get it to work right away. Um, but after 
going through a little bit of troubleshooting, I kind of figured that out. So things like Gears 5, Crackdown 3 also support this to some degree. But again, those games, once you get into the game itself, you know, your options and perks and skill trees and all that stuff don't really read. It's just the top level menus. This goes further. So I am going to take my mouse and I'm going to move to the Standard upper left game. here. Standard game. Start a single player match with or against computer players. Now this is cool because not only is it reading the item that I have my mouse hovered over, but in the lower right hand corner, it shows a tool tip or a description of what that item is. And just like uh, you'd have your desktop screen reader giving you that extra information, you know, perhaps uh, how to navigate or use the control or its status or some other description, maybe a hotkey that is associated with it. This is reading it too. So I'm gonna... Multiplayer, play with or against human players. Okay, pretty self-explanatory. So those are two big icons that just get you, boom, right into the action right away, that are side by side, left to right, down below that. Standard game. Self-explanatory. Campaigns. Play through the official campaigns based on real life historical events. Okay. Historical battles, historical battles. Certain names ring down through history as men and women who shaped the world. Some defended their homelands from invaders, while others used their military might to violently acquire the lands of others. Battles such as Agincourt, Bapius, and Hastings are remembered as turning points in world history, and names such as Henry V. Minamoto and Osman are etched forever as great conquerors. Now relieve their tragedies and triumphs. All right, so yeah, relive. It sounded, it sounded like it said relieve <laughs> instead of relive, but but yeah, so you get this nice long description of it's like, oh, okay, that's what that mode is. The art of war. The art of war. Challenge missions. Okay, Uncover so I'm not going to have it read everything about us and be here and forever. Practice. Learn to play. Learn to play by now, helping we're gonna, William Wallace rise from his humble beginnings to defeat the English. This is a kind of a tutorial campaign that has, I think, seven missions in it. We're going to play maybe the first two or three, just so I can show you the level of in-game accessibility that this game has. And it's something that, again, I've wanted in a AAA game forever. And this is going to prove, this is going to be a Global Accessibility Awareness Day video for tomorrow, as I'm recording this. And... I want to release it for that day because, again, this is something that I regularly, regularly uh, speak out on on the channel is that, yeah, these main menus are great, but when I get into the game, I want to have more text-to-speech, and this one proves that it can be done, along with things like Eagle Island, Skullgirls, and uh, Sequence Storm. Saves and replays. Resume a single-player saved game or watch a recorded game. Okay, so those are your main menu options, and then you have a few sub options here. You've got uh, two columns, you've got a two by three grid here of, of some additional things here. Editors, create your own scenarios and campaigns. That's pretty cool. History, read about the civilizations in the game, medieval warfare, and more. I haven't actually gone in there yet. I'm curious if those speak too. Maybe we'll check that out here in a minute. Mods, install or manage mods news options change your we're gonna go volume, in there for sure screen size, I point out a few things and other news watch the latest news on age of empires credits display the game credits mixer exit and then we have mixer the and we have exit so yeah there is our main menu system i do want to go into options really credits, quick because options, there's a couple things i want to point sound out volume screen size so across the top we do have interface tabs customize like settings you would in a multi-page dialog box modes and interface specifics so right now i'm on this um interface interface button. customize settings and such there's as a few language, options here that i really like and interface um, specifics as i hover over these items game again language, drop down collapse you know i can do the value, game language English, there's a whole bunch of other options i'm not going to go through everything the text-to-speech will read these items as I hover over them. On the right-hand side, though... In-game HUD scale, move the slider to increase or decrease the size of in-game UI panels. 
So again, it's not just like small, medium, and large. It's actually a slider, which is excellent. So you can scale the UI and the interface to be larger or smaller. Kudos. 120. Tooltip scale. Tooltip scale. Same thing for tooltips. I can slide those if I want. I'm basically relying on text-to-speech for those, so I'm going to kind of keep those a little bit smaller, but I could make those larger if I wanted to. Those are a couple of low vision things that I think are really great. They also have some colorblind settings in here. Um, 75 tooltip position. Select the position tool for tooltip position. Tool to be displayed. I like this too because Fixed you tool can tips appear in the bottom left corner of the screen. Floating you know, if there's a certain area of the screen that you can more easily objects. see, you, you can, can also turn off tooltips entirely. Shut up. <laughs> um but yeah, you can actually change on the screen where you want the tooltips in certain points, parts of the UI, which is again fantastic because you know some people might want them in the upper corner or the lower corner or different things like that. Same thing for like mini maps and things that you know that would be really helpful in some games. Um, so I wanted to show you those, but I also wanted to briefly show you audio, graphics, audio, audio, game. Button, hotkeys, hotkeys. Hot it hot has keys, its own button, huge customized hot tab of information. Preference. I'm not going to spend a lot of time here, but I want to point it out because the real-time strategy games, yes, it is mouse-driven, but there are a ton of hotkeys in this game that you know I can hit certain commands to build things. I can hit certain commands to focus on certain units that I have in play. I mean, there's the literally there's so many hotkeys. We have group commands, cycle commands, game commands, game commands, two of cycle, cycle commands, group commands, scroll commands, spectator slash military units. So military seven of units. Twenty villager build. Okay. Eight town center, dock. These are all shows the hot categories. Groups. So let's say I click on town center. Let's say I nine do of villager, villager. Build. Eight of twenty four. Shows These the can change. Groups. Um, all these on the right Dock, here will change cancel, like five of twenty nine. All of these things, so I can see what settings. these uh, see what hotkeys are available hot key. for these different things. Slash replay commands. Now, here is my one interface complaint button. that I have. Customize settings such as language, color blind There's modes, two things. and interface specifics. Okay, I was waiting for the speech to be quiet. There's two things that I want to point out right away. Uh, as far as text-to-speech support goes like the uh, the fact that it's in here is excellent Like I've been dreaming of this for a long time, especially in a triple-a game But the two issues that I have immediately are one um, I, w I would hope that they would add a The ability to just simply hit the control key Let's say to silence speech until I move over something or something else happens just like any other screen reader has that functionality because especially here you're reading not just an item but you're often reading those tool tips that pop up that can be really wordy and you know un until you interrupt it with something else or it finishes it's just going to keep babbling which you know again is good if you want it to but there's a lot of times where i just want to hit the control key and have it be quiet um so that's one thing that i do wish for sure. And I would think that would be a fairly simple fix, a simple add-on that they could actually improve on with a patch. The second thing, and I've played with this a little bit, but it seems like keyboard support as far as navigating menus and UI here doesn't seem to be here. So if I go to the main menu, or like if, if I try to arrow through these menu options, I can't. Um, it is completely seemingly mouse driven. So this is an instance where, like I said, I I have really mixed feelings because like on one hand, this is a great example of including very comprehensive text to speech, even in game, which we're gonna get to here in a minute. But a blind user is a totally blind user is still largely gonna be unable to play this game and really not even navigate this game super well without a lot of kind of guesswork. 
because right now the only thing that I can really do is move the mouse around. Standard game. And it reads that fine. So if I'm a low vision user, human players. Um, like I can see that oh there's some menu items here and I can just move my mouse over something and it'll read it. But if I have no vision to locate that, I can't just, you know, use a D-pad on a controller or my arrow keys on the keyboard and navigate them in a sequential and logical way. So, you know, being able to just have something that simple, being able to navigate by keyboard. Yes, there are keyboard commands for building units and calling units and whatever else you're doing in game, but actually getting around the interface via keyboard is not really there. So that's the other major issue that I have with the interface being accessible in Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition here. So let's go into, we're going to go... The Art of War. Learn to play. Learn to play. Learn to play by helping William Wallace rise from his humble beginnings to defeat so the English. So now it brings us to a map screen, uh, which we're going to play this map of different, uh, a few different levels. I think there's seven of them. And again, I can see that these are visually there. Low vision wise, the contrast is really great. Each little icon has its... A uh, little text tooltip below it, you know, like, oh, this is what this is. But I would say, I would argue that it is still a bit small. So I still have to get really close, and even I still kind of have struggle. I still have to struggle uh, while trying to read those text items. But I have enough vision to know that they're there. So if I move my mouse. One. Marching and fighting button. Okay. One. Two. Feeding the army button. Now, another thing that I would comment on here on the map screen, there's a good and a bad again. So, again, how many times have I been in like Saints Row, Red Faction, any number of open world games, Mafia, Mafia 3, whatever, where I would love to be able to move my mouse over a map screen and have it read points of interest. I mean, there's a gazillion open world games now. That's basically where the industry is at the moment, largely, at least the AAA and part of the industry. So being able to, A, move my mouse over something and read what that type of mission is, and if it works like Age of Empires 2 here, it would also read me the detailed information. Oh, what do I get as a reward? What are my mission objectives? What type of mission is this? You know, if I'm in... Uh, Saints Row, is it a, um, a story mission? Is it a side mission? Is it a hacking one or an insurance fraud or, you know, whatever it happens to be? Um, so this, again, proves, you know, people think that, oh, well, there's, there's so much going on in these games that it's just not possible accessibility-wise. It's just too complicated. Um, no, this proves that a map like this can totally be accessible. If these had tooltips, I'm sure that Age of Empires and the text-to-speech would read them aloud. This particular screen doesn't have text to or uh, tooltips when I hover Two. over these. It just tells me Feeding what they are. Feeding the army button. Um, but if they did, I'm pretty confident that they would read. So, no, map screens can totally be made accessible. And remember, again, you know... A thing that I also want to stop here and say, and I'm sure I'll say it again, is that, you know, I know some, I know some people are like, well, we want to get it right. We want to get it perfect. And if we can't do that, if we don't know how to make it perfect for everybody, it kind of just doesn't get done because, you know, we don't want to look at it like, oh, this is a halfway job. And I totally get that. I totally respect that. But just knowing that, like, even going as much as you can do at the moment, you know, do what you can do. Even if you're 50% of the way there, 75% of the way there, even though it still may not be accessible for some users, there are many, many, many other users that it's still going to be able to help. Like I said, when you think of even legally blind users, there's a huge spectrum. Um, comparatively speaking, there's actually a smaller percent of legally blind um, people who are actually totally blind. They may have any anything from light perception to tunnel vision to 
uh, blind spots or peripheral vision loss. It could be any number of things or just, you know, low vision, legal blindness like I have. Um, so, like I said, even though it really stinks, it really sucks, yes, that this is not totally playable by blind, at least you are including a, a huge audience. You can actually get a, a lot more people to play your game if, if you even go this far. Now, the one, the downside of this map screen that is a little bit confusing, and you would kind of have to figure this out on any map screen, is in the upper one. left here we have mission one. Marching and fighting. Mission one. Two, two is down into the right. Feeding the army. Mission three, three. down into the right three. again. Training the troops. Then you go down into Three, the left four, for mission four. Research and technology. Up into button, the left. Five. Because I mean, visually on the map, Sterling, okay, I get it. Button. You're taking this is the path that you took on the map, and visually, yes, I mean it does sort of make sense because maybe that's the path that William Wallace and his army took. But from an accessibility point of view, a blind user especially is going to be confused right away because you're going to go. It, you know, most people are trained to intuitively go left to right or up to down. And if you're going, you know, partially down into the right and then up into the left again, um, you know, having some sort of a way to either uh, like show or organize in, in a list or a sequential order that does make sense. So you can go from one, two, three, four, five um, can be really helpful for people and just make that kind of intuitive so that people can navigate. So that's the thing that I wanted to kind of mention on the map screen. And then if you are in an open world game, you know, you could maybe, I know some games already do this visually, but you can filter by different types of things on the map. So I want to look at main missions. I want to look at um, side missions, or I want to look at, um, Let's see, I'm just trying to think of a specific type of mission, like a, uh, I don't know, all the insurance fraud missions, or all the hacking missions, or all the racing missions, those kind of things. So being able to filter out and present the information that you're actually looking for can also be helpful. So we're going to go into One. the first mission. Marching and I'm fighting. Click. Skip. Button. We are without a leader. Skip. Back. The dead king Button. of Scotland. Has click no to air. cancel. War, War creeps, creeps in, in the from south. the south. What Edward Back. Shanks, the Button. King of England, Click to cancel. Has returned from successful campaigns in Wales and France. As Longshanks turns his attention to Scotland, the shadow of fear settles across the Highlands. The, the English have thousands, thousands of Welsh longbowmen, hundreds, hundreds of knights on horseback, and dozens and of siege back. Button. Click. We, we Scottish have a rabble of untrained back. Button. <laughs> We must act soon. If we're to have any chance of resistance, we need to forge an army by any means necessary. Okay, so there is a perfect example where the control key would come in really handy to shut up that speech. It's great, it's fantastic that it is reading that text-to-speech uh, on those drawings as it happens. But because it's already being narrated by a great voice actor, by the way, I, I like his, I like his accent. It's cool. Um, but you know, I want to hear him at that point. So I, I, you know, I what I would do is instead of having the text to speech read it, I would hover over something short like the back button and not click, just so that it would say back and then it would shut up. So having that control key would be really handy, so I could listen to the sound effects and the narration by the human narrator for that portion. So now we got our objectives Shows the screen. objectives you need. Main objectives. Okay. Shows main objectives. Follow the instructions to reach the Scottish village. Shows right. the objectives you need to complete to win. So we Shows have our objective here to and then we have a close, close button on the button. bottom. Objectives. We have obje button. and then we have a couple Shows tabs. We have tab. Hints. Button. Objectives. Hints, hints, button, scouts, and scouts. Button, so we're just going to go close, close for now because we're keeping resume. things simple. The English are terrorizing all of Scotland, and it's time for us to fight back. But if we are to defeat them, every one of us will need to learn how to march and fight. Follow the path to the blue flag. First, click the soldier. All right. So now 
one thing I can do is I can use my mouse wheel to zoom in a little bit. Now I kind of wish I could zoom in even just a teensy bit more. I wish I could zoom in a little bit more if I wanted to. And then I can wheel out and that's as far as I can zoom out. So I have a little bit of control there. Kind of wish I had a little bit more range in the zoom ability, especially when selecting units. Um, like the terrain and stuff isn't necessarily so bad, but like my little dude down there, um, you know, being able to see like what type of uh, character he is, you know, if you're low vision, you'd want to be able to zoom into that a little bit more if possible. Now, I can move my mouse around and watch what happens. No, we're, we're basically on a dirt path here. We have some trees around, and then we have some user interface on the bottom, which we're not, we're not going to use too much in this mission, where that'll be more in mission two. But even as I move my mouse over, this is just empty grass, but watch what happens when I move over a tree. Click a villager to gather wood from this tree. Click a villager to gather wood. Okay, let's, how about this tree over here? Click a villager to gather wood from this tree. Okay, now what happens if I hover over my little dude that it wants me to move? Click to select this military unit. Now it says click to select this military unit. I think later on, it actually will tell you, and uh, if, you, if you have multiple types of units, it might tell you like soldier, bowman, um, I, I don't remember what all the classes are, but like, so that's cool. I'm going to click him. I'm going to left click him. Click to select this military right unit, the blue flag. militia. Now right click near the blue flag. Now this is another thing that unfortunately it does not speak. So if I move my mouse over this flag, it doesn't say anything. So that would be another thing that would have to be made to be able to read but if I go to the tree that's right next to it click a villager to gather wood from this tree nope Militia. we're gonna click by the flag we're gonna right click by the flag oh. instead and every time you click on a unit and then tell them to do something Good. they have little audio now clips to the next flag okay click we're just the soldier gonna... then right click near the flag or he's already selected so we're just gonna right click it's again here. okay excellent now to move to the next flag you must walk through the black area Okay, so we see the little black area right here. That's kind of the fog of war. He's going to explain that in just a moment, so I'll let him do it. Oh. Moving into the black area reveals more of the map. The black area represents unexplored territory. That's all there is to it. Now go to the next flag, where you will meet some allied soldiers. Okay, now at any time, um, I, he'll tell me this a little bit later, but um, I can... If I move my mouse to the edges of any edge of the screen, like up, militia, it'll militia, it'll militia. move the you know it'll move the screen up, down, left, or right. But I can also use my arrow keys on the keyboard to quickly pan in whatever like direction the to arrows I use. From this so tree. let's go to our next flag. We'll right click here. here. Click to select and this that military is unit. That little to move all your soldiers at once. Tone means click objective near the complete. Units and drag around them. Then right click to move them. Try so moving your soldiers to the next flag. So again, this is an area where I'm not quite sure how to tackle this for a totally blind user because uh, you know, you could say, yeah, I want to select all units or all of a certain type of soldier or all soldiers, but uh, you know, I know how complicated this game can be. I mean, you literally have hundreds, if not thousands, of soldiers. And let's say I have 200 uh, militia, and then I have 100 archers, and then I have some other units. You know, if I'm being ambushed by multiple sides, I may not want to put all of my soldiers or all my archers in one place. I may want to split them. So you can't necessarily, you know, you can have those options for select all units or all soldiers or all military, but you also do need to be able to select just the units that you want. And I don't really know how I would do that um, audibly. I'm not saying that it can't be done. I'm just, my imagination isn't coming up with any ideas at the moment. So I'm going to drag kind of like you would in Windows. You see the little box getting Click bigger. Click to select this military unit. 
and we're just going to select all over everybody so everybody is now selected you see their little health bars above their heads and I can click right click to gather wood from this tree I can right click this flag up here and now all of their gun all of them are going to bunch up and move you don't so you click a villager to, to gather wood click hush the road ahead is guarded by an English outpost scroll up to the outpost building by moving the mouse to the very top of the screen then click the red outpost or use your arrow keys because I like to do that better so I'm gonna oh. right click on that flag the, and then the up. right click to attack this building there's your little uh, sniper right outpost click to kind of a thing your building. lookout tower so I'm gonna right click, right -click him the outpost right click to attack this building all right, and now you're going to hear a lot of ching ching clang. Click to select this military unit. Click a villager to gather wood from this tree. It's on fire and it's crumbled. All right, it has been destroyed. Of course, this destroyed. That should slow the English raids. Keep following the path to the village. Click to select this building. All right, so now... Hold down Alt and right click to garrison inside this building for protection and healing. This time it gave us a different tip because if I hovered over a building it says I can Alt and right click to basically hide. Um, you know, if we're getting, let's say, I want to keep my military outside to defend, but I want my villagers who are pretty much defenseless um, you know, I could select villagers and then have them hide inside so they don't get massacred and I don't have to rebuild them uh, if my enemy gets into the town. So I'm going to right click this flag in the middle of the square or middle of our town. And I want to talk a little bit about the buildings here in a moment because I think he's going to say something here very Home shortly. Sweetheart. But wait. The English are angry Click to select this outpost. military unit. They're coming to attack the village. Don't panic. Just click your soldiers and right click the red English soldiers to attack. Right click attack. to attack this soldiers, unit. And right click to attack this head dash warning. Click. And that little Viking click tone, click that's to like your this military uh, unit. Your, that means Good that job. somebody's English engaging in battle. To fight back against the English army. So there are audio cues, like you, know, you hear that one earlier, that kind of chime that made that game mission pause. objective was complete. And there's our another mission objective complete. It's a game paused. If I mouse over... You are victorious. You are victorious. All right. Nice little screen there. Return to map. Return to map. Leave map. And leave return map. to map and leave map. Now those, I think, are a little bit confusing because to me, return to map means... Um, go back to the map where I was selecting those missions that I was talking about earlier. But that what that actually means is return to the game. So I would say return to game and then maybe exit to map screen or exit to map. Because to me, that would make more sense. Just some of the wording um, is a little bit misleading. So yeah, return to map is basically return to what we're, you know, what we were just in. Leave map. Leave, Leave map. map. Skip. Button. Scotland has soldiers now, if only a few. But if we are to turn back the greed of Edward Longshanks, we'll need many more recruits and much more gold in our coffers. These, These ancient, ancient stones, stones and oaks around us will be back. Button. Drenched with the blood of clansmen. Okay, so there you Play go. Again. There's our little victory Button. summary story there. Now we're on a victory screen, or a mission end screen, the win or lose. And this is where, if you want to dig in, it's got basically like a table format where you can just view all kinds of information. So we didn't do much here because we only had a couple of uh, enemies and a couple of soldiers. But like you can see how many, how many villagers, how many soldiers did you create, how many died, how many enemies did you defeat, all kinds of different stats. So... It is in a table format, and again, you know, if the game like this added some kind of a keyboard support, and this is where I think it would really be nice if more games and game engines would not just support text-to-speech, but support actual screen readers should they be included 
in that device's operating system, be it Xbox One, Windows 10, the PlayStation 4 or 5, whatever, is that in a, de- you know, in a Windows 10 screen reader, like Narrator, there are already commands for websites and stuff to read tables. So if a game or game engine could plug into that, and then once it goes, oh, hey, this information is presented in a table, and if it's actually using the screen reader portion of text-to-speech, then I could theoretically have access to, and it, you know, if the game was coded so that the screen reader would recognize, hey, this is a table, um, then I could just use Alt-Control arrow keys to more intelligently and easy, more easily navigate the information in this table. So that is definitely an advantage to adding like actual screen reader which support which goes one step beyond just text to speech. So we are gonna return to the map. Return no, to map. No, we are not gonna do that. Button. See, to me again, that would mean that oh, it's gonna go to the map screen where I can select another mission. What we actually want. Return to the main menu. Return, return to, to the main menu. <laughs> back. Now Button. we're on the map screen again, which is kind of funny because return to main menu would mean oh, I'm gonna go back to the main main menu. Uh, no. We're just going to go back to the map. So, you know, again, I mean, once you learn it, it's not a big deal. But again, when you first start the game, I was originally a little bit confused because I interpreted the, the words in these buttons to mean different things than they actually did. So we're even covering not just blind and low vision accessibility here, but, you know, just a little bit of uh, cognitive accessibility. So let's go into our Seven, second two, mission. Skip. Skip. Our main back. march is on its Button. stomach. Click to cancel. So the old saying goes. My clansmen have been farming and tending sheep for hundreds of years. But gathering enough food to feed an army is a different matter entirely. Without, Without a strong, a strong economy, economy back. the eager forces Button. that we have cobbled together Click to will cancel. collapse again. Yep, fair enough. Now we get to learn how to harvest resources. Game paused. Got our mission objective screen again. Main objectives: Should gather 50 food, 50 wood, and 50 gold. Shows All right. The so now we're going to learn about resources, the and it's really funny because the game. every Close. time I think, every Button. time I see these Click now, like I know this, this is a traditional game, but you know, if it was a modern game, these would be in-app purchases, and you would have to wait for timers and whatever to get gold or wood or oh, I'm just it's like PTSD, man. I just I I can't stand like what a lot of modern gaming has become with these timers and paywalls and um, microtransactions. It's just, ugh, I hate it. Game resumed. To okay, support let's zoom the Scottish in again. Army, you will need to build up your stockpile of resources. To win, gather 50 food, 50 wood, and 50 gold. All right. To gather food from the forage bush, click a villager. So we only have one villager right now, so we've got our villager. Click to select this. Click, click him. Click, click to select right the villager. Click the forage bush near the blue flag. All right, so the blue flag is just to the left there, and they look like the little bushes. In the area at the bottom of the screen, you can see how much food the villager is carrying. The villager continues to gather from the forage bush until he is carrying 10 food. Okay, so I'm going to right, right click to forage for food. Now, build a mill nearby to gather food faster. It's villager. cool because it tells the me that will continue working for you, carrying the food to the town center. So on this bush, it tells me that it's if I right click, it's going to be food. But if I move over here, right click to gather wood. So it's going to tell me nearby to gather wood faster. These types of trees villager. are different. So even if somebody is low vision enough to see, like, well, I see there's some green there. I don't know if that's a tree or a food shrub. Right click to forage for food. All right, we're going to right click. Build a mill nearby to gather food faster, villager. Okay, so he's going to harvest. Villager. Now, we have our own, the only building the we have. The villager will continue working for you, carrying the food to the town center. The only building we have is the town center. Now, in the lower left-hand corner, I have some right, information villager. here. Buildings. Display the economic and infrastructure buildings you can build. 
So Lucky. there's little. You. The amount Lucky. of food you have oh, what is shown it? in the upper left corner for? of the screen. Buildings. In oh, addition no. to your display the economic and infrastructure you buildings wood, you can build. Gold and stone Husky. stockpiles. Q. Okay, so anytime I want to build a More building, you have, the faster you can gather resources. I can go to Assign the build menu, to and I can hit, or I can just hit Q to quickly jump to the build menu. So again, here's where your keyboard shortcuts can really come in handy, not just for blind or visually impaired. But for everybody, I mean, I mean, hardcore strategy players, yeah, they use the mouse a lot, but they also use tons and tons of keyboard commands. That's why there are so many hotkeys. Now, in the upper left, we right have our wood. list of resources. Build a lumber camp nearby to gather wood faster. Wood stockpile. Zero. Twenty. Gold st Twenty. Gold stockpile. Stone stockpile. Population. Five. Five. Population. Okay. Idle villager. Now Go that to the next button. Idle villager. Fishing ship. Trade cog. Trade cart. Or building with garrisoned units. The idle villager. No. That is the a thing that I don't think was in the original Age of Empires. The comma, comma, but key. was in Age of Empires Hockey. 2 and it's extremely Hockey. helpful. So if right I have somebody, I call wood. it the slacker button. Right. Idle villager. Sorry. Idle yeah. villager. So we to the next we have enough villager. resources where it had villager. another. Um, a villager, so I can right click right -click on a to tree now. Wood. He's going to start a lumber collecting camp lumber. To gather wood faster, villager. Okay, so we got one collecting food, one collecting lumber, and villager. so I'm going to go back to our town square. If right I click, click on to this, drop villager. Click to select. Click to select and you this hear that, building. That little town center sound effect. Click that means it's being building. selected click now in the lower left hand corner. Gather. Town center. Research wheelbarrow. I have create villager. Cost fifty food. Gathers resources. In the resources. lower left, it basically gives Builds me options buildings. that are based also on either my current unit or current Upgrade status or current building that I click the armor. Efficiency. To win. Town center. Also got a fifty wood resource wood. gathering. Fifty gold. Create to villager. Wood. Create click villager. A villager. Then cost right click a tree. Fifty if you food. haven't found any gold yet, gathers research. Click on Click of it. Click to select this villager. So, yeah. See again, especially as to Wallace is talking there. Click to select I would love to villager. be able to hit Control and temporarily shut up the text to speech. So it's awesome that text to speech is there, but I also do need it to be quiet from time to time. So, click to select this villager. One thing we're gonna do click to is we probably don't villager. have to, but I want to show it to you anyway in this mission. Is let's see if we have any idle villagers. Three. Idle villager. Yeah. Idle okay, villager. so we do have an villager. idle villager. We are gonna go. I'm gonna right click in this gold. gray area here, this dark area, because I happen to know there's gold up here. Come on up here, buddy. Good. Right. Find some right gold. click to mine for gold. Right Good click job. to mine for gold. Don't have enough wood. Build a mining camp near okay. villager. Okay. So now he's gonna go collect some gold for us. Right. Villager. But. One of, what right. I was going villager. to was that if I click right. on click the town to center villager. here, click to select this. Click I'm going to have an option, center. and one of the things I can do on any building where I can spawn units. Set gather point. Set gather point. Choose I'm going to click on that. From this building, get, remove get, right click. And I'm going to right click point. just to the south here of the building, and there's my flag. Now that means anytime that building spawns a new villager, I can see that one is done. And I, he's going to stand right there until I issue him an order. If I had a barracks, let's say, for military units, I could click on that barracks and then say set spot. Um, click what do they call it set gather point. gather point. Click a villager to gather. Food so from I can this put bush. a certain spot to say, okay, I want you guys always to gather here so I can see where they are. Now what click I can also do create villager create villager. Cost. 50 food. Okay, we're going to do that. Click a villager to but gather now, food let's from say that I want to hit bush. Q. Click a villager to gather uh, food from this gonna forage bush. Okay, sometimes it doesn't always work, and I think it's you have to be in Quick certain game status resume. or something. Click um, a villager to gather food from this forage bush. I was going to try to build a house, even though I don't need to. Um, Click a villager I to think gather food from this forage bush. I think I have to have so many resources before... It'll let me bring up the build menu, I think is why. Right now we only have like three or Click four villagers villi Idle here. villager. Um. Idle villager. So let's have villager. you harvest right that tree. Right-click to gather wood. Villager. 
Now, buildings. Buildings. Display the economic and right. infrastructure buildings you so can I'm build. Do that. Build house, cost 25 wood. Build mill, cost 100 wood. Build mining camp. So cost, I'm gonna say, let's say I wanna build, build a house. house. Cost 25 wood. Provides five population each. Your current slash supportable population is shown at the top of the screen. So again, Upgrades, it's reading your tool tips, it's sight, reading the requirements. Build house, cost now again, here, wood. a blind user, Provides totally blind user, would not each. be able to do this your current effectively. Your current supportable population is shown um, at the top out. of the screen. You now have enough pool. Upgrades, line of sight, town uh, center. I'm gonna click here. Right click to construct this building. You're well on your way to Use now, villagers to build faster. Ah, there's so much speech going on. Okay, so... What I was saying is that if I, let's say, I hovered my mouse over the town square, when I'm trying to build this house, it's going to be glowing red because I obviously can't build there because there's something else there. Um, if it shows the actual, you know, like regular building unit, then I can left click and it'll build it there. So, you know, again, I don't know what kind of system there would need to be so that a blind player could place uh, buildings and other items on the map in a logical way so that A, they can build in a valid building spot and B, so they can find them again. Because again, once you build, let's say a barracks, you're gonna need to interact with that building to build, to generate more soldiers or to upgrade it or whatever you're gonna do with it. So there's some aspects of like the overall navigation and user interface that a blind user is going to have. It's still, they're going to have a lot of trouble playing this game still. But with the level of text to speech that's in it so far, like for a low vision user, legally blind user like myself, it's still pretty fantastic. Like if I think if they, like for me personally, if they would add, the feature to hit the control key to kind of shut up the text to speech uh, until I move over to something else. That would be a huge fix because you notice that it's reading me what the things are in the world. If it's a building, if it's a tree, if it's a, a gold mine that I can mine from, soldiers, it's telling me what those are. Um, and when I build something, like it tells me that all these little buttons in the lower left-hand corner, it's telling me, hey, okay, create a building or set a gather point or whatever. And then when I click the buildings, I can hover over them and it says, oh, okay, read the, um, I want to build a house. It costs 50 wood and then it's going to give me five more population. If I build a soldier, it's going to tell me what those requirements and what kind of soldiers they are, what they do. So, you know, again, think about an, an, an action game. How many games have I played where I'm struggling to read all of these inventory items and, you know, weapon stats and durability and uh, attack and defense damage and all those things? Or in an, you know, in an RPG or action game and I need to choose my perks or skill, uh, go through a skill tree and say, hmm, what, you know, what uh, skill perks do I want? So many games have that right now that you can choose. I mean, even something like Doom. Like I said, Doom Eternal. <laughs> There's all kinds of perks that you could add to your suit and your weapons and your <laughs> what you know, general perks, whatever. So a game like Age of Empires 2 here proves that even a really complex game that has tons and tons of systems and tons of UI. Again, even if it's not perfect, like right now, again, you can't navigate it really well or much at all through a keyboard. But if someone is still a primarily can use the mouse, it's still going to add a huge amount of accessibility to the game for more people. You know, I mean, yes, it sucks that a totally blind player is still not really going to be able to play this, but... There's still going to be so many people who can return to map. So return it's to still map. worth doing. Leave map. It's Leave map. It's still worth Ed adding skip. this level. Button. Edward Longshanks, for all his disrepute, has shown his military tactics in Wales, England, and France to be very effective, if not cruel and ruthless. He is indeed an enemy to be feared. 
The English sacked the town of Berwick upon Tweed. With that, I could call it a battle. But it was truly more than massive. Unless we organize our army back, back, there will be more buttons. buttons to fall. I pray that we can be ready when Longshanks comes. Okay, there's our little victory story summary there. And we're back to our another table format again. 1 BGFH, 1 of 1. 0, military score is 0, economy score is 2, 258. One right, one. so I didn't do anything with military. That was just a gathering mission. Return to the map. Nope, I Return want... to maps. Return to the main menu. Return to the main Return menu. Return to campaigns. Return to the main menu. Come Return. on. There Back. we go. Seven. So I'm going to do three. three really quick, and then we're going to wrap the up troops. the video, because there's a couple three. other odds and ends three. I do want to talk Skip. about. Skip. In villages, In villages throughout, throughout the highlands, the highlands there is grim, grim talk, talk of skirmish. skirmish. Back. Back. Button. Click we to cancel. Scottish defenders broke ranks and fled. The English have an army that is larger and better trained. To, to compete, compete with them, we are back. We are going to need button. new recruits to click pick up to spear, cancel. sword and bow. We must transform these shepherds into soldiers. All right. Fair enough. Game paused. Okay. Shows the uh, train for militia. Shows the objectives you so need to complete. So simple mission. To train shows for the militia. You need to complete to close. All right. Game resumed. We're gonna zoom in. We will need many soldiers to defend our homeland. To win, you will need to create four militia. We'll start by creating villagers. Click your town center. Okay. Well, we already do have some villagers standing there, but click we'll do what he says. This building. Then click, click to select this building. Then click to create the villager, button, the click create villager. The town center. Create villager. Cost. It takes 50 time food. for the villager to create appear. villager. Cost. If your town center is selected, food. you can see the progress Gathers in the resources. area at the bottom of your screen. Builds and repairs buildings. Yep. So on the bottom, that kind of weapons. tan area. Upgrade. You see the little points. Armor. Uh, thing there. Efficiency. The little villager bar. Job. Okay. The villager built. has appeared next to your town center. Now create another villager. Okay. Now, again, the other thing that I'm going to do is he hadn't told me to do it, but set gather point because I still have my Choose town square selected. From this Remove, right -click I'm going to right click right point. here so that now I know exactly where they're going to spawn out of that building. Click and he wants me to create another villager, create so we villager. build. You need Cost additional housing to create villager. Population. Cost to build the house. Food. Click a villager. Gathers resources. Okay, I'm going to click the villager. Select this villager. Yeah. Click the build house villager. Button. Then click where you want to build the house. Buildings. Build house. Cost. Build house. So again, cost. let's say we're going to put the house yeah, right up here. Sounds good. Oh, right click to construct this if building. More than one villager click to select this. It will click to faster. select this villager. Oh, click yeah. to select. Right click to construct oh, this okay. building. So we're going to have both of them build villager. this house. Right we're going to take click this guy. Select. Right click to And we're going to right click the tree. Build a lumber. She's going to villager. Start house chopping down more wood. Villager. Try building another idle villager. Villager. Idle okay, villager. I'm going to do an okay. idle villager. Go we got villager. a slacker button over the there. Units. And the we're going to build another house. To the top of build house. Shows your current build house. Cost 25 wood. Provides five. Oh, right yes. villager created. Okay, right I'm going to construct four. Right villager. Uh, there's, I want to I right right chop right down that villager. tree that's right by that right house Right click to gather wood. Build a lumber camp nearby <laughs> to gather wood faster. Villager. Villager. So the one thing that I would say about when you hover over certain things, um, there could be a little bit of tweaking. Like I said, I'm not Another really complaining because... Like houses. Try building a barracks. The barracks is a military building. But uh, I'm going to pause it for a second. Quit um, current game. Button. Click to quit the current game. Hush. Um, so when I, uh, you know, when it's reading everything, like I said, I'm not going to really complain because just, just having this level of in-game text-to-speech is awesome. I've been wanting this in so many games. If, if even this level of text-to-speech, whether it was navigating with a controller or a mouse or a keyboard or all of the above, I would just be ecstatic if... 
this just became a standard in the next few years of games supporting this amount of text-to-speech. But when I am hovering over things, one thing that, you know, again, developers working with actual players, working with actual blind and low vision users is so important um, because one of the things that screen readers have kind of perfected over the years or have adapted over the years is that there's a fine balance between being too verbose and not providing enough information the, that the user needs. So let's go back game to the resumed. game. And if I, let's say I hover over a house. Cl click to select this building. Okay, click to select this building. That's okay. Cl click to select this building. Um, but I know there were times where there was something where it was like really, it was, I forget what it was, but there was something that was really wordy. And, you know, especially in a game where, where things are going to ramp up eventually, you're going to need, you're going to need more, um, think you're, you're going to need to be able to hear things very quickly. So if you can say something in two or three words that still clearly tells you what that means click to select this building instead of saying blah 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 and then the word or maybe you have the word first um it's just a kind of a like a semantics thing or like a structure thing of like what is the most important thing that the user needs to hear first they need to let's say if i click a person uh do we have any slackers i think we have a slacker down here click a villager oh, no, he's to gather wood from this tree wood. Click okay to but i think we do got a guy to select this villager so click to select this villager maybe instead it could say villager click to select because if i'm moving around really fast yes i know that i need to click it and it'll still give me that information if i'm a new user but it would say villager, and I would know, oh, okay, that's a villager, that's not a militia unit. So as an advanced player, the first thing that I need to know is, what is that person? I can't quite see what it is. Is it a military? Is it a villager unit? Whatever. So even just little things like that, saying villager, click to select. I mean, yes, it makes sense from like a properly formed sentence structure, but, you know, it's... It's just one of those things. It's a minor sort of a thing to consider. So we're going to click click, click to select them. this villager. Click to select villager. And you are going to chop right down that tree right wood. there and then villager. I am going to build villager. barracks like he told me to. So just like your buildings, buildings. Display military buildings. Display the military buildings you can build. Hotkey W. So button. that makes sense. We have Q for regular buildings, W for military building or regular buildings and then q for regular w for uh military Mi repair order your villager s to repair a building ship or siege weapon to its full hit points the repair cost is deducted from your stockpile hotkey e button hotkey e so they're just going in order all of those hotkeys they're following a logical sequence and all of them have to do with buildings. So there might be other ones like ASD that may not deal with buildings, but they might deal with military. I'm just guessing, but like, so in some ways it does make logical sense. Military we're going to do that. Build archery range. Build barracks. We're going to build a Cost. barracks. Build archery we're gonna dump range. him right over Cost. here. Right click yeah. to construct this building. And do we have any slackers you, that we can uh, take center. advantage of? Kia. Idle villager. Kia. Builder. We're right, gonna right click, click to construct on you. this building. Use several villagers to build faster. Yep. So we're gonna builder. make a couple of dudes right, work builder. on that. Idle villager. Yeah. Builder. Okay, and right we're gonna click. have you work on this it too. Building. Builder. Right builder. Okay. And click to select this building. Yep, see there it's over time, kind of a time lapse thing. They're building, we've got some of the found out. There we go. Complete. Now you can create soldiers. Click the barracks, then click the Create Militia button. Selecting different buildings or units gives you different options in the lower left corner of the screen. Right. So, right, so if I click select, the center click, again, click to select, click to select, I click have town center, create in the lower villager, left, click uh, Create Villager. Create, 
Set gather point. Set gather point for that. Set gather point. But if I click the barracks, click to select, click to select this building. You hear that's a totally barracks. different instead of that. Ch -ch -ch, it's a ch -ch -ch -ch, it's more of a military sound. So now when I go to the click lower barracks. left, set gather point. I'm going to set the gather point for Remove, that. Right I'm going to right click, click to place just to the point. south of it because I can see it easier. So now when I when I choose what click he told me to gather wood, create militia, cost I'm going to do that. Sixty food, twenty gold. Click and you see the little status bar there the because I still have the building selected. We're about halfway there. And he's going to spawn right where that flag is that I told him to. And... Militia created. That's one militia unit. Create three more and you will have enough soldiers to protect this area. Click a villager. Okay, let's do it. Create militia. Click cost. the barracks. 60 food. Click the create 20 militia gold. Button. Three more create to make three soldiers cost. Cost. Click a villager to gather So they're going to the be screen. queued up and it's going to take time. But that's sort of how the basics of this uh, interface works. And the main thing that I wanted to point out to you guys is just how full, how fully supported text-to-speech is. <clears throat> I can click things in the actual play area. Militia created. I can click the UI. I can click things on the map. We've got a mini map that they haven't talked about in the lower right much, but... Signal allies. <clears throat> signal allies. Like Send your allies a signal. Okay. They see a mini map. Top militia you created. Have a few soldiers. You will be able to defend this area against English attacks. So there's a few other things that you can do later regarding the mini map of like notifications. The game or, resumed. But yeah, I mean, we could be here all day. But I, the main thing that I really want to point out is I'm not so much covering Age of Empires and explaining everything about it. But I want what I want to show in this access unlocked video is that. Anyone who has seen or has played a real-time or turn-based strategy game, these games get insanely complex, especially with their user interfaces. And the fact that something like this Age of Empires 2 Remaster supports so much, like everything that you hover over is spoken, is fantastic. And it proves that a totally complex game action, adventure, shooter, open world, RPG, anything like that, not just menus, top level menus, or a couple option screens, entire interfaces can be made accessible, and as they're figuring out how to do it for the totally blind, like to make it logically make sense, even to start with, if it's something like this, where you might, until they figure out every mechanic to make it playable for totally blind players, still adding this amount of text-to-speech support um, for people who are low vision, legally blind, is still going to help an immense amount of people. So, you know, yes, it's not perfect, and I know, you know, it sucks if you're still one of the people that aren't able to play, but as ex everyone is still kind of exploring and learning how to make games accessible because it just really wasn't thought of all that much until fairly recently. You know, it, doing something is better than doing nothing. You know, if you add an option, if you add different control options, text size options, audio options, you know, anything like that, text to speech, it's going to help somebody. So... Leave map. We're gonna leave, leave map. map. Skip. Now that we have Button. militia stationed Back. across the border. Back. Button. The English have slowed their raids. But facing Longshank's army will be another matter. The wicked English king is yet to bring his famous longbows to bear. Our, Our militias can, can only, only get us, get us so back. Button. They're going to need more advanced weapons. Yep. All right, so there's our little victory. Play again. There is our uh, little stats table screen. We're going to go back Return to our to map. Return to the main menu. Back. Uh, well, the main Button. menu. Now, I'm going to hit escape. We're going to wrap up the video here very shortly, but there's one other thing from the main menu that I do want to look Credit. at News. that I forgot about. Mods. History. Read about the civilizations Read about this in the history. Game. I want to know if these warfare. speak. The, the Japanese. Let's see The here. Italians. Okay, the Italians... Political control of the populous and agriculturally rich Central Valley of Mexico nice. fell into confusion after 1100. 
gradually assuming ever greater power were the Aztecs. All right, so the Aztecs. So again, <clears throat> I'm not really able to navigate by arrows, but if I, you know, use my vision to hover over all of these civilizations in the left, or these, uh, yeah, civilizations in the left hand on the left hand side, and I hover my mouse over the title the here on the right, then we've got a little kind of drawing in, in picture. And then we have the body of text below it. If I hover my mouse over it, yes, it reads it. So I'm gonna click on the Berbers, the Berbers. Okay, I'm not sure who they are, but let's uh, find out. Archeological evidence indicates the emergence of distinctively Berber tribes in North Africa around 2000 okay. BC, while historical sources and inscriptions first mention them around the eighth century BC. Early Berbers were mostly pastoral nomads, though a minority practiced mm, sedentary right. agriculture. These tribes had close contact with Carthage and the Greek colonies in North Africa. The word Berber That's itself really derives cool. from a Greek term used in this case to describe the local inhabitants of North Africa west of Egypt. In the 3rd and 2nd huh. centuries BC, All right, several so Libya, the Berbers. I'm just going to shut them up there. Again, having the control key would be really helpful. But yeah, so even this does speak. Like I said, the main thing that really needs to happen as far as even just menu navigation is there doesn't seem to be keyboard navigation support. So a blind user is going to have a lot of experimentation and then just navigating and placing things and clicking on where things are on the map. So a blind player is still going to be probably find this game largely unplayable. But having this as a low vision user, I can't tell you how helpful this is. And traditionally, like I said before, I haven't really played many of these turn-based or real-time strategy games or text-heavy RPGs for this very reason. Because there's little, you know, buttons and tooltips and stats and upgrades and skill trees and just, I mean, there's gobs and gobs and endless amounts of text that have to be read and if it's in a stylized font if it's small and just the vol sheer volume of it is difficult for me and you know being able to have text to speech or a screen reader read all of that stuff aloud i can save my vision for enjoying and actually playing the the visual part of the game so awesome awesome job to the creators for at least going this far with adding the text-to-speech support that it is here and admittedly you know i might get into more of these types of games if they were made more accessible to me because a large like yeah i mean i'm not so much into this the strategy turn-based or real time but i would be more much more open to giving them a shot if they were more accessible and as a result of seeing learning how much they've added to this game I might give some of these single-player campaigns more of a chance and try to play through this more because it's gonna be way way easier for me to try it and to do so so you know again thank you to developers for for adding this it's awesome I love it keep it up and I hope I want other developers to see this because if it's proven that it can be done. We have a fighting game, Skullgirls. We have a rhythm game, um, Sequence Storm. We have a real-time strategy game that has added in-game. I mean, so we're just seeing a lot of these different types of things slowly start to add a high level of text-to-speech functionality. And it's, it's awesome. I can't tell you how happy I am. And I just want to see more and more like i want it to become a standard i want to see this so hope you guys enjoyed the video please share this video with other developers um you know consult with blind and visually impaired potentially uh, potential blind and visually impaired players there are a lot of us out there on social media let us know we'll be glad to help you out you know um answer any questions that kind of a thing and like i said I know some people say like, oh, I'm not going to use it unless it's perfect, unless it's totally accessible. And if it's still, you know, if, it, if there's still some jank to it, I'm not going to bother. But you know what? A large, per, a large percentage of us, I'm grateful for, you know, the accessibility that you do have. Yes, I would love for you to strive 
to make it you know totally perfectly accessible in every way but especially in the beginning here as we're learning the fact that we're adding this this amount is still going to help a lot of people so don't choose not please don't choose not to add accessibility because it's not going to be perfect and not going to work for everyone just doing something is better than nothing so hope you guys enjoyed the video please share it um, this is going to go up on Global Accessibility Awareness Day 2020. Um, please share it. Please let me know if you have any other questions. You can follow me on Twitter at BGFH79. You can find me on YouTube.com slash Illegally Cited. And everything is divided into playlists. Uh, including Access Unlocked. I have a several other topics for different types of genres of games and accessibility features. I have playlists on VR accessibility as well. So you wanna, you're developing a VR app or a game, definitely check those out. But uh, yeah, you can follow me there on YouTube. You can also follow me on Mixer, mixer.com slash BGFH. And I'm gonna include my email here this time too. It is J E S S E A N 1 at gmail.com. And that's kind of my gamer email address that I use uh, for doing a lot of this game uh, for you, the YouTube and Mixer stuff, and for my a lot of the game accessibility work and consulting. So, again, I'm totally willing to, if you're a developer, you have questions, you want to make your game more blind and low vision accessible. Please let me know. I can try to answer any questions. I'm totally open to uh, consulting gigs. Um, I would be happy to discuss that with you. Um, you know, uh, be it remote or in person, if if possible. Um, so just you know, let me know. We're out here, and yeah. So hope you guys found this video helpful. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and until next time, I will chat with you guys in the next video. Later.